The United States will withdraw from the Paris Climate Accord In 2016, the United Nations met in Paris to create an agreement to reduce CO2 emissions and rising temperatures, and the Obama administration signed into the agreement. Two years ago, the Trump administration decided to pull out of the accord. It is clear that environmental regulation has become a tightly partisan issue when it should not be, as the economy and the environment are two closely tied issues. When one thrives, the other seems to be disregarded, creating a world where nothing is accomplished as the political climate changes. The question is, though, should Americans have the choice of environment between the economy, or would a combination of both be better? Right now, the Trump administration has brought about a time of intense focus on the manufacturing power of America, promising to, quote, make America great again in an economic sense, by repealing, quote, unnecessary government regulations. As manufacturing goes, America goes. Um, you know, our, our sort of prosperity as a sector is inextricably tied to how well this country does economically. And we're having a moment right now. Um, the, the, the political sort of climate right now is, has been very good for manufacturing, and, and we're growing. Uh, manufacturers are increasingly optimistic about doing business in this country. And Although this is true, people argue that the protection of the environment is supported by the Declaration of Independence, as it provides Americans with a right to life. Humans not only affect the climate but are affected by the climate. So it turns out that there is a very strong connection between climate, human life, and the way we're actually living our modern life here in this world. A 2014 report by the IPCC, Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, showed that climate change will shift the pattern of wildlife in the upcoming years, causing lower crop yields and a loss of biodiversity. Yet President Donald Trump continues to dismantle environmental laws. The main argument against the protection of the environment is that the economy will be compromised. A 2014 report by the International Energy Association has shown that it will cost $44 trillion to curb emissions through 2030. Another issue is the loss of jobs through the dismantlement of the coal and oil industry. And right now, voters agree that the economy is more important than the environment. Every single proactive measure, even if it had support from industry, has been unraveled. And that's, it's not just about climate, it's about the air we, drink, air we breathe and the water we drink. They've unraveled safe drinking water standards, they've rolled back the Clean Water Act, which is actually a, 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 a Republican-led bill from the 70s, um, and endangered species, public lands, you name it, they are on the wrong side when it comes to environmental protection. As a result of heavily partisan-focused issues, America will continue to go back and forth with political parties playing a figurative tug-of-war, eventually landing America in an environmental and economic mud puddle. So you've seen a, a, a fairly rapid deregulation on a lot of those same things that the Obama administration put, put in. So, you, I mean, the pendulum swung hard one way and swung hard the other way. It is, frankly, our hope that we don't continue to have the swings. Um, that the, the pendulum doesn't swing back and forth again and again and again. The thing that we need more than anything else is regulatory certainty. We want to know what the rules of the road are long term. To solve this concerning problem, as a country, we need to draw on the key thing to what it means to be an American. To innovate and make better. With this innovative mentality, we need to create solutions to common problems that appease both the economy and the environment. A so-called middle way solution. We have already come across a middle way solution, clean energy, that has already benefited the economy and will continue to benefit it more. The World Bank estimates that the U.S. wind and solar creates about 13.5 jobs per million dollars of spending, and that building retrofits constitutes 16.7 jobs per million dollars of spending. This is more than three times the 5.2 jobs per 1 million for oil and natural gas, and more than two times the 6.9 jobs per 1 million dollars spent for coal. We don't need to rely on coal. We can make this transition to a clean energy economy and we can do it in a way that creates jobs and helps the environment. After hearing conservative manufacturing officials, liberal environmental activists, and even common people, this conflict is all about what people believe and what people's values are. 
a self-proclaimed question to the American people of now and future generations. What will you choose? The economy or the environment?